Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. A raucous kennel tonight in Spokane, Washington, an interstate rival renewed. It's the Huskies in town at four and three, and the Zags a perfect eight and zero, oh, and fresh off of a big win over Arizona. Beth Mullins along with former Wildcat All-American and national champion Miles Simon. Zags in their home whites, Washington in the road blacks. And we'll keep our eyes on number five in the white jersey, Nigel Williams-Goss, the former Washington Husky now suiting up for the Zags. And here he is with the first shot attempt. And Beth, it'll be really interesting tonight to see how Nigel Williams-Goss responds to playing against his former team, his former coach. I almost feel it can go one of two ways. You can be too amped up, too jacked up and excited to play against this team and want to do so well against this Husky program that you were the starting point guard for two years there. Or you can relax, just let the game come to you, have a lot of fun, and just try to lead your Gonzaga team. And oh, by the way, he'll be matched up uh, quite a bit tonight against number 20 in black for Washington, perhaps the best freshman in America and his first time with a national television audience in Markel Fultz. Yeah, and if you haven't seen this young man play, it's really, he's a special talent. He averages 23 points per game. That leads all freshmen across the country, which is a very talented and deep freshman class that we have here in college basketball. Young man from DeMatha Catholic, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. But he can do it all. He's very athletic. He's a great passer. But the biggest thing that Coach Romar said, he plays with a lot of poise and he doesn't get rattled. And that'll be tested tonight here in the kennel. And he is the only guy in the country averaging over 20 points, six rebounds, and six assists per game. They'll be up against it, though, against a, a top 10 foe on the drive here, Jonathan Williams. And he's going to have an and one opportunity. Miles, this is a well-balanced, unselfish, very efficient team. Yeah, I love this Gonzaga team. And here you see Jonathan Williams with some of the versatility. As they ice the ball screen, Jonathan Williams capable of making threes. The beautiful up fake, the drive, and able to draw the contact to go to the line. Williams is uh, one of uh, several transfers into the Gonzaga program. They lost four starters, including the notables uh, Domus Sabonis, uh, Sabonis and Kyle Wilcher to the NBA. Yeah, and, and it's weird when you look at this Zags roster, you see a lot of experience. Jordan Matthews, a senior. Jonathan Williams, a redshirt junior. Goss, a redshirt junior. Karnowski, a redshirt senior. But it's three new start. Three of these guys never played for the Zags yeah. before. So it's really a new team that Coach Few is putting together. Jordan Matthews, the grad transfer from Kyle, he didn't get here until a couple days before school started. So it's really, he's been learning by fire the last couple months because of the fact that it's new terminology and then learning to play the Gonzaga basketball way, which is different from what he learned his previous three years at Cal. Foul was on Jonathan Williams, and at the free throw line is Noah Dickerson, the 6'8 sophomore from Atlanta, who was an original commit to Billy Donovan at Florida, and then when they made the coaching change, he decided to head west. He's uh, starting for the fourth game in a row. Washington, by the way, they went with a bigger lineup. They put Sam Timmons, the 6'11 freshman, number 33, back into the lineup tonight to try and deal with Shimmick Karnowski. And I'd love to see Gonzaga get that ball inside to Karnowski. And it almost works against Romar now because Timmons just picked up his second foul. So he's probably going to have to come with Malik Dahn. So that is a quick two on Timmons. He's going to stay in the game right now, and uh, Lorenzo Romar does not send anybody else in to check in. Well, what they did is switch the matchups now, and, yep. and Timmons is having to guard Jonathan Williams, but there's no chance he can guard him. <laughs> Timmons just can't move quick enough laterally at this point. He's a freshman. He's 6'11", 260 pounds. They switch the matchup because he has two fouls, and they throw it back to, John to Jonathan Williams, and that's just an easy blow-by for J3. You see Timmons just opened up his stance. Now Noah Dickerson with the blocking foul, and Williams going back to the line. Dickerson with his first, and there is uh, Malik Dime who will check back into the lineup uh, for Washington, who had been the starter the last couple of weeks. Now, one thing, Malik Dime, he's a great shot blocking presence, th presence three blocks per game, but he gives up 80 pounds 
to Shimmy Karnowski. Oh, what a move by <laughs> Fultz going to the left side for the lay-in. The prep All-American and one of the top recruits in the country. And now Karnowski, can he back in on the smaller dime? He's usually a very good passer, dropping the dimes, but he turns it over there. Well, he couldn't decide who he was going to throw it to. Washington did a great job of sitting in his lap early in the possession right there. He couldn't decide if he wanted to score or not, and then he passed the ball between two Gonzaga Bulldogs. Terrific story is Karnowski just to be back in the rotation after a bad back injury a year ago. He forces the travel there on dime, but they weren't even sure if Karnowski would be back to play basketball, and uh, sure enough, he's back and he's shining once again. Yeah, and I talked to Coach Few for a long time at practice yesterday. He said there was about a three or four week span where it's really some of the darkest moments of Karnowski's life. Because about a was, year ago this time. Yeah, about yep. this time. The alley-oop Williams, a back door from Perkins. Crisp, Williams bothered the shot. Now Jonathan trying to fight for the free ball. Possession arrow will stay with UW. Well, a beautifully executed play here by the Gonzaga Bulldogs. As Jonathan Williams receives the back screen from Nigel Williams Goss. Goss, the point guard, sacrificing. He doesn't get an assist for that, but a great job of finding the body of Jonathan Williams' defender and freeing up his partner for the wide open dunk. Williams uh, has all seven of their points. He hasn't missed. He's three for three. Here is Markel Foltz coming across country from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, hanging hard off the back iron, and Williams with a board. Jonathan off to a hot start. This is Nigel Williams-Goss, two years at Washington, decided that he wanted to come cross state to eastern Washington and finding a new home here at Gonzaga. Pull-up J is good from one of the other transfers, Jordan Matthews. And I like what Nigel Williams-Goss has done on his couple of possessions. He got his bad shot out of him on the first <laughs> possession, but then he set the nice back screen. Now he passed up a shot on that possession, found his partner, Jordan Matthews, for the one dribble J. The touch here for Dickerson. Foltz is a guy. He's going to have to have a huge game tonight if Washington's going to pull the upset here in the kennel. And when I say huge game, I'm talking 30 to 35 points yeah. for Fultz. He's had a couple of, of 30 point performances. Well, that will be a challenge against a Mark Few club. Now in his 18th season as the head coach, 28 years all told at Gonzaga. And amongst coaches across the country who are still active, he has the best win percentage at 81%. Also is the winningest coach in West Coast Conference history. Backdoor Fultz into the body of Karnowski. He'll get a second chance, miss the chippy. Malik Dime, stick back won't go. And those are the opportunities that have to fall for the Huskies. A couple point blank opportunities. And they cash in on the other end. The counter strike for the Zags, and it's Matthews again. Matthews, a young man that I know very well. Been family friends with the That's Matthews right. family for his whole life. My dad and his dad, best of friends for over 50 years. The dads get into discussions about whose kid's the better shooter at all. Has that ever come up? Uh, Jordan Matthews might be, the, might be the better shooter. I actually had a discussion with Jordan about that today. He's probably the better spot-up shooter in his college career, but I told him I had a better hey. overall <laughs> overall time. Uh-oh, now he's just showing off in front of you, Miles. <laughs> 54, Zags, big early. Tent City outside of the kennel. They were there last night. The cold weather forced them indoors overnight, returned early this morning. They are camping out, excited to see this undefeated Gonzaga team. 
with a lot of new faces this year. Beth Mullins along with Miles Simon. Glad you could join us. Terrific atmosphere for college basketball. Three new starters that transferred in, and they're already having a big impact tonight. Yeah, they really are. It's the three guys that have most impacted this game yeah. and got them out to a great lead. And it's been Jonathan Williams and Nigel Williams-Goss and Jordan Matthews doing all the work so far for Mark Few and this Gonzaga squad. And, and, and this is arguably one of his deepest, most versatile teams that he's had in his tenure here in Spokane. And Jonathan Williams is the guy that got it started tonight. He's a versatile forward, a transfer from Missouri, left-handed, about 6'9", can put the ball on the floor, shows some great athleticism there, can defend multiple positions. Then his partner, Jordan Matthews, one of the best shooters on the West Coast, has knocked down two early threes, and he's going back, going down to the line right now to try to get his ninth point in the first five minutes of the game. And then you've also got Williams Goss, who has a couple of assists early on, and the Zags are shooting 75% with Williams Goss running the show. They've hit six straight shots. And Beth, this was the first thing that Coach Romar mentioned to us at shoot-around yeah. today, was not letting the Zags get off to a great start against his young Husky team. A good sign for the Huskies. They do come out of that timeout, and get the bucket inside. They had hit just one of their first nine shots for a team that scores uh, almost 90 points per game. The problem is they're giving up almost 80 and Yeah, defensively they are just not where Coach Romar wants them to be at this point of the season. They really have trouble stopping teams. Dime is a good shot blocker, but they gotta get in a stance more early, more often, have better help side defense. But sometimes it's just taking pride in stopping your guy one on one. Trying to get Dime another look inside. They've had several opportunities in the paint, and they keep getting turned away. And finally, a foul down on the low block will get Noah Dickerson to the line for Lorenzo Romar now in his 15th season, which makes him the longest tenured head coach in the Pac-12 with six trips to the NCAA tournament, but it's been a five-year drought, and they are looking to get back this year and looking for a signature win here tonight. Yeah, if they can get a win and pull off an upset against a team like Gonzaga here, a top 10, obviously that can go a long way towards their NCAA resume. But this is a, a team that's depleted by the NBA draft. Yeah. When you lose DeJounte Murray and Marquise Chris, two first round guys, and maybe only one of them was expected before last season to go in the draft, mm -hmm. more than likely it was DeJounte Murray. And then Marquise Chris just came on like gangbusters late in the season last year and he propelled all the way to the top 10 in the draft and I believe he's starting now for the Phoenix Suns. But even if one of those guys stays, yeah. I believe this is a 20-win team because you add 15 to 18 points a game to what Markel Fultz is gonna bring to the table and it's gonna boost the level of play of everybody else. But obviously those guys aren't here and so it's gonna be a little bit of a growing process for this Husky team this season. Well, that's the, one of the new realities in the college game. You, you can e probably expect a guy like Fultz to only stick around for one year. As the see, drive from Perkins is good. And see, Beth, this was too easy. Too many times have Gonzaga guards and even Jonathan Williams just gotten into the paint with no resistance. Just straight line drives getting all the way to the rim. They have hit seven of their first nine shots. Perkins with that bucket. He's their leading scorer. They've got five guys averaging in double digits this year. And they forced the turnover from Markel Fultz. The turnovers were a big problem in their most recent loss to TCU. They had 25 of them. And a hot start for the undefeated Gonzaga Bulldogs coming in at number eight in the country. And you watch these young post guys now, Tilly and Collins, two freshmen in the game. It's kind of a four-headed monster that Coach Few has and some of his, the advantage he has depth and versatility-wise. As Jordan Matthews knocks down another corner three off the baseline drive, baseline drift action. Jordan Matthews with 12. He's three of four from downtown. And Beth, remember, he's played against Washington numerous times. Three years in the Pac-12, yeah. he actually had a 31-point game against these Huskies when he was a sophomore. And the other time he saw him, it was 23. Tilly running the floor, and he's fouled.
Well, how about this? You get it out in transition, you find your guard, and then you got your big fella, the Frenchman, Killian Tilly, one of the best athletes on this team, throwing it down through the contact. So you think you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> Shimit Karnowski's only playing about 20 minutes a game. So you get him to the bench, and all the Zags do is bring in the seven-footer Zach Collins and the 6'10 freshman Tilly from France. And they're able to wreak almost as much havoc. And Coach Few loves Tilly and Collins' energy that they play with, yeah. their toughness. On top of that, both of them very skilled, can knock down threes, face up postmen. Going to get Washington for an offensive foul here. Well, Saturday we've got a couple of good matchups for you, including Kansas and Duke. It'll start at 3.15 Eastern with Kansas at home at the Fog taking on Nebraska. And then Duke UNLV in the hashtag Neon Hoops Showcase. Those are, of course, available on your app as well. I'll be at the Fog on Saturday for that game. And Frank Mason coming off a 30-point game for Bill Self's 600th win. He has to be in the early National Player of the Year candidate. So. He's averaging 20 points a game for the Jayhawks, and <laughs> everything's just too easy right now for the Zags. They are picking them apart. They are shooting 85% from the floor. They have made 11 shots in a row. And Romar's just letting his young team play through it. Fultz looking for three. Silas Melson got a hand in his face. It's Perkins now with the push. Collins thought about the trail three. Why not find Matthews with the hot hand? That'll end the streak of 11 straight shots that found the bottom of the net. Thibel dropped it off for Dickerson. Now we've got a reach-in foul. We'll take the timeout with them. 27 to 6. All Gonzaga early. Gotta get up, gotta get up. And won't you help us beat cancer by logging on to JimmyV.org or calling 1-800-4-Jimmy-V to donate today. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. And the V Foundation, founded back in 1993 by Jim Valvano and ESPN. They have awarded more than $170 million in cancer research grants. Back here in Spokane, Gonzaga on a 22-2 run. They have held Washington to just two of 16 shooting, while the Zags themselves are up close to 80% from the floor. And some of those shots for the Huskies, they've had a point blank range. Dime has missed a couple layups. Fultz has missed one or two. So there's been some opportunities there. And then when they've missed those, Gonzaga has cashed in nearly every time. Jordan Matthews, the leading scorer with 12 points. He's got three three-pointers. That one will rattle in and out. Good fight inside by Noah Dickerson to get the second chance. Yeah, great job by Dickerson. Just keeping the basketball alive, positioning himself, carving out some space against Karnowski. Schimmick is back into the game, out of the timeout. Jumping into the passing lane, Matisse Thibel with the flush. Nice job by Thibel. Reading the double team that came from David Crisp, knowing he has to play the weak side. Great anticipation by Thibel. Known for his defense primarily last year as a freshman, uh, Miles, but he's adding the offense. He's a double-digit scorer this year. Back door, and the wrap is good. I'm telling you, Gonzaga went over that action for at least 15 to 20 minutes in practice yesterday and today in shoot-around, because Washington loves to overplay the wings, get in full denial, try to cause turnovers, and they want just a dribble out action, and they get the back door perfectly executed by the Zags. Williams Goss now with four points and a couple of assists against his former team. Here he is with the ball. Collins. Fiber with the rebound. Fultz is off to a slow start. Markel just two of seven shooting. Number 20 in the black jersey, the star freshman for the Huskies. Dickerson. Good help coming over from Collins. You got to kick that back out if you're Dickerson. That's a bad shot. 
And those are one of the opportunities that we that Coach Romar talked about. A bad shot, which is a turnover in this case, and it leads to an easy transition. Kick that basketball back out. You got time on the shot clock. Try to get a better look if you're Washington. That's the foul on Fultz, his first. Silas Melson to the line, the junior from Portland. Went to Jefferson High School, same high school as Terrence Ross and Terrence Jones. And yet another weapon, the depth this year for the Zags, impressive. Going eight or nine deep, even in their close games. Their one ranked win coming most recently against Arizona. Also have wins over San Diego State and Florida. Nelson. Another long rebound. What a play by Fultz. Terrific defense from Markell. Does he get rewarded at the other end? Can't hang on to it. Karnowski may have gotten a piece of that shot. Karnowski goes to that left hand and scores. And that's just too easy. Karnowski catching six or seven feet from the basket. He has great touch, especially he loves to go to his left hand. That was his first shot attempt and his first bucket. Of course, he's being defended by Timmons, who had the two quick fouls, and now they switch back off. And baseline runner is good from Williams Goss. And right now, you're just seeing little to no resistance from the Huskies on the defensive end. Sags are still shooting better than 70%. Karnowski's going to get whistled for the foul here, his first. Well, the big fella with the sweet beard gets the post up and an even sweeter left hand jump hook. Zags up big. I like about you. Bob Rondo's going to be there, the voice of the Huskies for 36 years. He's flown cross country. Congratulations to Bob last night in New York City at the National Football Foundation dinner. He won the Chris Shankel Award for his accomplishments and being a distinguished college football broadcaster. So congrats to Bob Rondo, the voice of the Huskies, and uh, working tonight and also getting ready for the playoff. I know that's going to be a, a tall task for Chris Peterson to try and figure out how to beat the Tide. Yeah, uh, it's going to be tough. Obviously, yeah. Alabama is the best team in the country, but... I think Jake Browning is going to be up to the task against that Alabama defense. And I, and I think they're going to be able to score some points against them. And that Husky defense is no joke. No joke. They have no some joke. athletes on that side of the ball that can produce some points. A little Buda Baker. But yeah, and I think it's going to be a closer game than what the people in Vegas are predicting. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Mark that down, folks. I know uh, the uh, fans here at the kennel were serenading the Husky basketball team with chance of <laughs> Roll Tide pregame. This is a tough place to come into and win. Gonzaga, when they're in the top 10, 49 and three at home here at the Kennel. Well, it's truly one of the most special atmospheres in all of college yes. basketball. I never got to play a game here in Spokane uh, at the Kennel or even the old, the old Kennel. But I know coming in here to call games, it's truly amazing. And I've been to Fog Allen and Hilton Coliseum and old Matt Court in Oregon. Those are some of the best places I've been to. And this place is right up there with the best, top five, top 10 in the country. Got the students sitting right behind us uh, for the, what, 233rd consecutive sellout now at the McCarthy Athletic Center, which opened in 2004. The old place is right next door. They still play volleyball there. They need to get that ball inside to Karnowski. Shimmick trying to back in with that big body of his, comes up short. So, so teams have done a couple different things against Karnowski in the last couple games. Iowa State in the finals of the Advocare rotation as Markel Fultz knocks down the mid-range jumper. They went with the double team early in that game, and Karnowski, such a special passer, was getting it out to his teammates, and the Zags were knocking down open threes. 
And then Arizona this past Saturday, they played him one-on-one, -on -one and Karnowski just went to work against the Arizona Post guys. Hey, a reminder, Thursday night, tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN, it's the Home Depot College Football Award Show. Chris Fowler and the gang coming at you from the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta. And amongst other awards, the uh, Maxwell Award for Player of the Year, the Bolitnikoff for Wide Receiver, the Thorpe Award, Best DB, and also the Davey O'Brien Award for top quarterback. You mentioned Jake Browning. Is he going to be the guy, or is it going to no. be East Coast? Little East Coast bias. I wouldn't say East Coast. I mean Louisville. You consider that the East Coast? Consider it the South. The South, yeah. But I, it's going to be Lamar. Going with Lamar. It's going to be yeah. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. That'd be a pretty good pick. Washington, by the way, has scored the last four. Fultz is going to try and make it a 6-0 run, and the tip is up and in. I like the response from the Huskies. Continue to compete, play hard. You got to just kind of chip away at this lead. If you catch the Zags slipping a little bit, falling asleep, making turnovers, try to make them pay on the other end as the Huskies did there. I think they'll credit Devin Ear DeRusso, the 6'8 sophomore with the bucket. Williams Goss backing in, crisp, gets the bucket. Goss Nigel now with eight. Yeah, Goss sometimes, you feel like he almost has a little bit of an old man's game because he doesn't wow you with like his speed or athleticism, but he's so smart and he's a big guard as you see he posted up right there against the smaller Chris. Folks had a couple of chances. Thibel. Collins able to come out with it. Perkins. You, you've really got a couple of point guards, really. And he and Williams Goss are out there together. Terrific ball handlers against pressure. I just like the pace that Fultz plays with. Doesn't seem to be rushed out there. Wants to run the offense, continue to get other guys involved. And a nice move by the freshman Timmons. Gets the one-on-one -on -one opportunity in the post. Feels the baseline open, beautiful spin. Now Timmons trying to get up on <laughs> Collins, who goes around him to the right. Beautiful move by the freshman from Bishop Gorman. Four state titles there at Gorman from Las Vegas. Set the Nevada single season rebounds and blocks record. Nevada, Timmons. You know, besides Fultz, Zach Collins is probably the best pro prospect on the floor. 6'10", really? 6'11", can shoot the ball, runs like a deer, excellent athlete. A couple of the pro scouts I talked to earlier today are definitely here to see Collins. They love his upside. Well, they have done a terrific job with the big guys here in recent years at Gonzaga. Collins is next. Thanks, guys. 39 to 18. Gonzaga in control. Jordan Matthews leading the way with a dozen points. He's hit three of five from deep. Well, Beth, I mentioned earlier, I've known Jordan Matthews since he was a little kid, and I was fortunate enough to work with him this offseason before he came up to Gonzaga. Now, the thing we talked about is that he dips the ball when he can. He's a great shooter. He shoots with excellent rotation, great feet. And he got the chance this summer when I was working with Chris Bosch, Jordan Matthews came over to the gym, worked out a few days. And on that exact day when we were, when I took that picture, as we were talking about how he can get a quicker release, he needs to go up with the ball from where he catches it. Don't bring it down to your waist level. If you catch it high, shoot it high, almost like Clay Thompson-esque. Yep. And that's going to come with, he needs a little bit more shoulder strength to be able to, and arm strength and upper body strength to be able to do that. But you can see his form is really picture perfect. He shoots with a great spin on his basketball. The rotation is excellent. But it's interesting now, he's knocking down these shots today, and I have that picture. But that's the exact things we were talking about earlier this summer. Very cool to get the opportunity for him to work with, with you and with Chris Bosch. He's the... 6'4", senior from Los Angeles, three years at Cal, graduated this past summer, and then decided he wanted to play his final year here with Gonzaga. Well, think about this, how much the game has changed, that you have a 6'11", 
power forward yeah. <laughs> talking to his shooting guard yeah. about becoming a better shooter. But Jordan was really dialed in. He's a hard, he's a hard worker. Him and Nigel Goss, Nigel Williams Goss and Parker Cartwright were the starting backward on the same AAU team, the California Supreme, a few years ago. Looks like the Zags are going to get called for the offensive foul there. It'll be on Zach Collins. Matthews was the best three-point shooter in the Pac-12 a couple years ago. A hot start to this season. And then the last five games, he was only shooting about 25% from downtown, but a terrific start here tonight to try and get back on track. Well, right now, if I'm Washington and I'm Markel Fultz and I'm looking up the score, I'm down 19, I have to try to start taking over here and maybe try to get it down to 13 or 14. And I might have to do it by myself before the half ends for us to have a chance in the second half. It's been a rough night for Markel. He's 3 of 13 from the floor, and there's another turnover. I feel almost Markel, he, he's a very unselfish player. Yep. And he lets the game come to him. But sometimes when you have a lot of talent and your team is down, they're going to look to a guy like Markel yeah. Fultz. Okay, put us on your shoulders for a couple minutes, and then we'll try to regroup and pick it up off of you. Just a freshman, but he's already had a couple of 30-point performances. And it's Karnowski getting a trip to the line. A reminder of uh, our action for you on Saturday. Nebraska at number three, Kansas. Take you to Allen Fieldhouse. And then it's fifth-ranked Duke taking on UNLV in the hashtag Neon Hoops Showcase. Both games also streaming live on your ESPN app. Earlier tonight, we saw North Carolina win a squeaker against Davidson. And on the women's side, that number one versus number two showdown went to Connecticut over Notre Dame. The Huskies win their 83rd game in a row. <laughs> Amazing. And they have my favorite women's basketball player, ah. Katie Lou Samuelson. From? Modern Day High there School in Southern go. California. Great coach, Kevin <laughs> Kiernan down there. She might, be, she might have been a better shooter than you. She's definitely a better shooter than me. I've, I've seen her in the gym, and it's lights out. Runner in the lane. Green will get a second chance. Melson got a hand in there to strip it, and down on the deck is Tilly to keep it alive. On the run, Matthews taking on four Huskies, and he draws the foul. And an injured player is down, Matthew Attaway, the 6'9 transfer from Auburn, who is just getting back to form, hasn't played in the last two seasons, once because of the transfer redshirt and once because of a knee injury. Well, here's Matthews just going in transition, and Attaway going to contest at Ooh, the rim yeah. there. One, he takes an elbow right to the face from Matthews as he's contesting the shot. But then it looked like when he sat up there that he was holding his, holding his left wrist. You know, a lot of times when you take those falls, you brace yourself first with your hands, and, and you can tend to get maybe a sprained wrist or a broken wrist. But hopefully it's nothing too minor, nothing too major for Attaway, and it looks like he's just going across the bridge of his face there. Junior from Toronto is, uh, I think, at least going to have to come out for a play or two. There was some blood on the towel. While they get that taken care of, Jordan Matthews We'll go to the free throw line. 91% free throw shooter. Now, I've had a couple former Zag players today tell me that they feel this could possibly be one of the best Zags teams of all times. They love the depth. They love the versatility of this team. Dan Dickow, Matt Santangelo, who does the radio there, both yeah. very high on this team. But I don't know. There's been some great teams throughout throughout history and <laughs> but I still think this team is going to have their best basketball in front of them yeah because we mentioned it earlier about this is a new squad and when I look at this team they're going to really gel in February and March 
as they get more comfortable playing with each other, yeah. still getting used to Coach Few's system. Because even though Nigel Williams-Goss was here last year, he only practiced 10 to 15 times. He had an ankle injury that he ended up having scoped in the spring. Yeah. It, it's remarkable when you think about it. In each of the last two seasons, as Williams-Goss drains the three, you know, he's got to love that against his former team. They've had to replace four starters the last couple of years, and, and that team two years ago was in the Elite Eight. Final minute of this first half, an impressive one for Gonzaga. They're shooting over 60% from the floor and holding Washington under 25%. Tilly with a block. Matthews with 14, Williams Goss with 11, the two leading scorers. It's been a perimeter Gonzaga team so far tonight. Well, let's see if they go high ball screen here for Nigel Williams Goss. Try to get into the lane. There it is. Karnowski just inside the line, and it works out just fine. Just how they drew it up. <laughs> Shimmick Karnowski with the catch and shoot jumper from 17 feet. Now you know it's been a good half from the Bulldogs if Karnowski's doing that. The big fella gets the mid range, 47 to 22. The score at the break here in the kennel. Now let's get you back to the studio with Doug and Chris. You're watching Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Back here at the kennel in Spokane, an efficient and surgical first half of play for the eighth ranked and undefeated Gonzaga Bulldogs, 47 to 22 over the Washington Huskies. Beth Mullins along with Miles Simon, glad to have you back here in Spokane. And Boy, not much went wrong in that first <laughs> half for Gonzaga. Not much, what, what, what did go wrong? Really nothing. <laughs> they were dominant on the defensive end, besides giving up too many offensive rebounds. Yeah. But the two transfers, Jordan Matthews and Nigel Williams-Goss, were absolute studs for the Bulldogs in the first half. Matthews knocking down three-point shots. He makes three of five from behind the arc. He gets it going. He gets 14 points. Then Nigel Williams-Goss, the former Husky point guard, he led the charge. He's maybe the most important player on this team. He gets 11 points, adds three assists, knocks down a three and everything went right for the Bulldogs. Just a dominant performance in the first half for the Zags. They were able to hold Markel Fultz to three of 14 shooting. The uh, freshman sensation held to just six points in that first half. And here is Williams Goss matched up on Fultz. Karnowski. Now the thing I want to see from Washington here early in this half and for the whole 20 minutes is how hard are they going to compete? That'll tell me a lot about this team going forward. Are they just going to mail it in for the last 20 minutes? Because they got hit in the mouth early in this game, early and often, and they're down by 25 at the break. Or are you going to come out and compete, play hard, continue to rebound, defend, and try to use this opportunity in the second half to get better against one of the best teams in the country? Looking at a very real possibility of dropping to 500. Uh, Williams Goss on the drive off the glass. But you do have six of your next seven games at home if you're UW, and you want to set the right tone for that as you head home. Nice pass there by Markell and a trip to the free throw line for Sam Timmons. But unfortunately, and that's great that you're going to have these home games and you can build some momentum possibly going into conference play, but unfortunately when you get into conference play, half of them are at home and yeah, half exactly. of them are on the road. Exactly. And so far this team has not been able to perform well on the road. Timmons misses on the first. And even at home it can be a little dicey. Let's remember they lost to Yale yeah. to open the season and Yale lost their best player to injury and is out for the year and didn't play in that game. Gonna call a three second violation, I believe, there on Gonzaga. And one thing I notice with Washington on the defensive end of the floor, there's little to no talk on the defensive end of the floor. 
And part of that can be because it's a young team and maybe they don't have that leader, and especially if you lose a guy like Andrew Andrews, who can be more of a vocal guy. But in an atmosphere like this, communication is of utmost importance. And it should be the number one thing that should be happening on the defensive end. They should be saying, I help side, I got man. Pick yep. coming left, pick coming right. But there's really none of that going on, and they're literally about 15 or 20 feet away from me, and I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody move their mouth on the defensive end. What's that old adage? If you're not communicating, you're not defending? Well, Gonzaga is uh, and you're also putting being, that to the test right now. And you're also being selfish, because that means you're only really worried about yourself. Yeah. On the run, Karnowski! If he's the first guy down the floor, then you're in big trouble as an opponent. To me, that's that's embarrassing if you're watching. How does Schmidt Karnowski at 7'1", 300 pounds, beat every Washington Husky down the floor? No way that that, that, that should happen. There's no way that that should happen. Tremendous hustle from the big guy. He'll get rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. And when we asked Mark Few about Chimic, he said, well, what a great day it was over the weekend in the win against Arizona. He was the MVP of that game and what he had been through just to get back to play for Gonzaga after the back injury and the staff infection, looking for the big swat there. Well, Beth, we, we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. It was a, some of the darkest days of not only his basketball career, but just his life because they didn't, he didn't know if he was going to be able to play ball again. And for a young man that's 22 or 23 years of age or at that point, to not know what your future holds, something that you've been doing your whole life, I mean, that is a, uh, a huge question mark and something that can really get you down as you see Thibault knocks down the corner three. But he's re regrouped, and Coach said he's still only at about 85%. And it's awfully tough to stop a, a play like that for the 300-pounder when he gets you buried deep. He has proven to be, if you throw the double at him, he's proven to be a very good passer, very patient. Dickerson will try and pull him away from the rim. Kept alive by the Zags. Perkins. Matthews fouled on the drive. Here's a lot of the problems that team, many teams have facing Shimon Karnowski. One, he's so big, he loves to post up on the right block because he wants to get to the middle and go to his right shoulder, left hand jump hook. So do you double team him? But if you do that, the problem is, look at these three point shooters that they have. Perkins, Matthews, Goss, even Williams can stretch the defense. So now you're in a rotation situation if you double team them. And if you leave them one on one like Arizona did yeah. on Saturday, then Karnowski just goes to work in the post. He goes nine for 13 against guys that are most likely going to be smaller than him. My choice would to be to probably try to play him one on one and make Karnowski be the man each yeah. and every game. And I can't let. Jordan Matthews or Nigel Williams Goss and let the three pointers rain and get out in transition. So I think that's going to be the true test of how teams are going to play and defend the Zags this year. There's a nice drive by Fultz. Fultz. Nice move. And Gonzaga is shooting 50% from outside tonight. Fultz now with 10 points on 5 of 16 shooting. He's struggled to get open looks tonight. You know, but Fultz is. I know he hasn't had a great game tonight, and it's been a team effort defensively against the Zags. But Fultz is so talented. Came from DeMatha High School, one of the powerhouses in the nation. His head coach, Mike Jones, one of my good friends. We coach USA basketball together. Perkins elevates over Fultz. But Fultz, he didn't even make varsity until he was a junior in high school. Now, you think about that. Now, this is a guy that's wow. going to be probably a top three pick in the draft, and he only played two years of varsity basketball. Most young men now are playing four, four years of varsity basketball. But he said that year on JV really helped him grow as a leader, become stronger as a player, and learn to take over games at a high level. Hey, we might show you a look at uh, one of the plays that changed the course of his life, a dunk you won't want to miss when we come back.
Back here at Gonzaga and uh, Washington freshman Markel Fultz. This was his debut on the varsity, right? Yeah, his second varsity game ever, and it was against a powerhouse public school in the Washington, D.C. area, Ooh. Eleanor Roosevelt. And that was a really a, a, a turning point for him early in his varsity career. He said it was a big confidence booster for him to know that he could hang with some of the best players in the Washington, D.C. area. I showed him that dunk today on my phone, and he said, yeah, that, that, that dunk meant a lot to yeah. me. He said that was really the first time that he'd ever dunked on someone off of two feet yep. in his life. That's why he's one of your top freshmen, along with uh, Malik Monk and Lonzo Ball. And one of those guys on there, Jonathan Isaac. If you haven't seen Jonathan Isaac play, tune in against Florida this weekend. Jonathan Isaac is yeah. a 6'10 wing, special talent. He'll go very high in the draft. Can score the ball, excellent defender, good shot blocker. Josh Jackson, obviously a stud for Kansas. But Lonzo Ball has been a game changer for UCLA. Karnowski to the left hand. UCLA, uh, your favorites probably right now in the Pac-12, uh, the way they've started. Got to be. They've been yeah. tremendous so far. For them to win the Wooden Legacy, they go on the road and hang 97 points on Kentucky. It's a deep, it's a deep lineup. Lonzo Ball leads the way with his unselfishness. Nine assists per game, can score the basketball when need be. And then watch out for Aaron Holiday off the bench. Now in the first half of that Kentucky game, he came off and provided him a great spark with 13 points. I know Steve Alford is loving his team. That may be the best win on anybody's resume all year for what uh, they've been able to do. When you talk about West Coast unbeatens, you got two in the West Coast Conference and two in the Pac-12. UCLA, USC, and then of course Gonzaga and St. Mary's. This has been an impressive showing so far for the Zags. Their balance, their depth, their ability to score inside and out. You look at their schedule, the, non-conference test from Tennessee. And then they'll uh, they'll head deep into the WCC with a couple of games against St. Mary's, a couple of games against BYU. But you, you're gonna look at a team that's fa favored in every game they play the rest of the year. Well, the Zags and the West Coast Conference, it's gonna be a good league. And I think it's yep. gonna be a two-bid league, possibly three. I think St. Mary's has done a good job, obviously, scheduling. You see the Gonzaga upcoming schedule. Akron is an underrated team coming out of the MAC. That'll be a tough test here in the kennel for, for Gonzaga. But St. Mary's, Randy Bennett, they returned their whole squad last yeah. year from last year's, and I think they won 29 games. This year, they've already went on the road to Dayton, one there, one at Stanford. So they scheduled better in their non-conference portion of the season. Jock Landale. He's a big guy that can compete Huge. in the post area. Calvin Hermanson is off to an excellent start. And then they got Rayhan and Nar, two of the best passing guards that you'll find anywhere yep. in the country. That was a one-bid league last year there, probably looking at, at a couple, and the Zags could be looking at a high seed again. And I think about the one thing you probably think about in St. Mary's is high scoring, play up and down, up tempo, and they do those things, but they're one of the better defensive teams that there is in college basketball. Going to be fun to watch them go at it this year. Carlos Johnson, the freshman out of Finley Prep in Vegas to the line. This is a young man that Coach Romar is very high on. Last game had 13 points, eight rebounds on the road against TCU. Played some high school ball at Shadow Mountain High School, home of Mike Bibby. He's already lost 25 to 30 pounds. As you see, another three-point shot put in by the Bulldogs, but I think Carlos Johnson could be an impact guy a couple years from now. Just kind of a tough, gritty guy, good defender, can really get to the rim. That's a nice find right there by Williams Goss to get it out to Perkins for another three. They are six for 11 from downtown. Williams Goss, four assists to go along with his four boards and 17 points tonight. And you see Foltz right there has the whole package. You can isolate him, he's good at ball screens, can catch and shoot. He's shooting 48% from behind the arc going into tonight's game.
Saturday, we've got a good uh, doubleheader coming your way with Nebraska at Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse. And then it's Duke UNLV in the hashtag Neon Hoop Showcase, also available on your watch app. Duke oh. got a nice win over Florida the other day in the yeah. Garden. Yeah, I watched that game last night, and Duke has a legit National Player of the Year candidate. And it's not any of the guys that you think it was going to be. Jason Tatum, Harry Giles, yeah. Grayson Allen. It's Luke Kennard. Luke Kennard has been an absolute stud for Mike Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils. I think the assumption, Miles, was that when everybody was healthy, he'd go to the bench and have a hard time <laughs> keeping him off the floor. He's not going to the bench. He's only going to go to the bench when he asks for a sub. Collins with the good post up, and he's fouled. Luke Kennard is so smooth. He's about 6'7", but he can shoot threes. He handles the ball like a point guard. Excellent passer. Gets to the lane. They run nice action for him where they curl him into the high post last night. And he was hitting shots, and he was being a playmaker. When we talk about the Zags depth, wait till the Blue Devils get healthy. They got one more guy to go, Harry Giles, and, and he's a monster. That team, I think, can separate themselves from a lot of the rest of the country once they're at full strength. Hopefully soon for college basketball fans. Yeah, I was reading the quotes from Andy Katz and Jeff Goodman that they were tweeting out last night from Coach K's press conference, and they think that Harry Giles possibly comes back uh, and plays in one of the games before Christmas time. And I think that'll be good for him because then that helps you get, a, get acclimated to playing a college game before the rugged ACC starts. Yeah. Out of bounds. Washington will keep it with 12 on the shot clock. Schultz. Tough shot, the fadeaway in the corner, air ball. And they just do get it up in time to beat the buzzer, and Fultz was hurt on the play. The initial reaction here from the athletic trainer looks like a cramp in his right leg. And you'll be really thankful at this point if you're Lorenzo Romar and the rest of the Washington Husky faithful. If that is just a cramp, it looks like they're just trying to massage it out and stretch it out. see Foltz there as soon as he came back down after shooting that fadeaway jumper in the corner, not really able to put much pressure on that right leg, the right calf area. 12 points and seven rebounds tonight. And one of the other things that Lorenzo talked about with Markell is what a good teammate that he has been. He's been humble, he's been a hard worker has not tried to separate himself or put himself above the rest of the team, even though the skill level is off the charts. I, I think the most telling thing that Coach Romar said was that he's not playing for the NBA right now. He's still playing for the name on the front of the uniform, and that's the Washington Huskies. He's playing to win this game tonight and the next game in a few days. That he's not, he's not into all the draft boards and all the hype that is surrounding him right now and his future five or six months from now. He's kind of just living in the moment, enjoying being a college athlete, and more so enjoying being a Washington Husky. It's been a struggle tonight, however, Miles. Plenty to cheer about for Gonzaga, and one of the best home crowds in college hoops. Truly is, and the Zags have gotten out and ran early and often, and you see the strong finishes from the big guys. Well, you can uh, do your part to help us beat cancer by logging on to JimmyV.org or calling 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to make your donations to the V Foundation. All donations benefit the foundation and their efforts 
to Fight Cancer, founded by Jim Valvano and ESPN back in 1993. 100% of all direct cash donations go straight to cancer research. And that's just truly amazing, and cancer is something that has affected everybody. I know it's affected my life greatly. My father is a two-time cancer survivor, beat colon cancer and prostate cancer. I unfortunately lost my grandmother who helped raise me about nine years ago to lung cancer. I know it's been a part of your my, life also. My mom, uh, lung cancer as well, several years ago. And uh, one of the, the best in the business in terms of raising money for cancer research here in Spokane is Mark Few. He and his wife have done a tremendous job with their efforts locally. There's uh, Mark Few who's been involved. Uh, they have one of the biggest um, events in the country amongst college basketball coaches. And Matisse Thibel, the player for, for the Huskies, who uh, has had to deal with that as well. Uh, Thibel lost his mother to cancer a couple years ago, his senior year of high school, and actually the night before his senior day game. There's my name, Elizabeth. Now, there is one thing that Mark Few and the Zags are going to have to clean up is their work on the defensive glass has not been that great. They haven't been put, putting bodies on the Huskies. Unfortunately, the Huskies just can't finish those opportunities, but they have 23 offensive yeah. rebounds on the night. Another missed shot there, corralled by Jonathan Williams. He's the transfer from Memphis, who played at Missouri. Now the hardest thing in a blowout when you're the team that is in the lead in this case the Gonzaga is maintaining your concentration and focus and your intensity because you know the game is pretty much under wraps so now it's trying to continue to execute and do the right things and the little things to continue to progress as a basketball team. Karnowski was fouled on that rebound. They've scored 72 points in 30 minutes so far tonight. Karnowski missed the layup. Matthews is there. In and out. And all the way back out to Nelson. Everybody getting a touch here for Gonzaga. His pass picked off. Johnson, no. Dime to the line. Now, the last few minutes, I feel that this Washington team is competing at a little bit higher level right now. On the defensive end, trying a little bit harder, being a little bit more focused, still attacking on the offensive end. Dime is the 6'9 senior from Senegal, one of the top shot blockers in the country. He's only been playing ball for about five years. Able to get the first one to go. Now in his second year as a JUCO transfer, and Foltz will return to the lineup. This fellow being held 10 points below his average. Zags have cooled a little bit. They've hit just one of their last seven shots. Perkins fouled on the drive by Crisp. And now into the bonus. And one of the question marks maybe for this Gonzaga team is that you don't have that dominant one-on-one -on -one player or a guy that can necessarily take over a game. And going forward now when you get into a close game maybe in the WCC tournament or you're playing St. Mary's or BYU you need the WCC battles and on into the NCAA tournament you've had Kevin Pangos and Kyle Wiltshire and Kelly Olenek and even Sabonis in these last four or five years is who's going to be that guy for the Zags now Josh Perkins is their leading scorer 
I feel he's almost that guy, yeah. but he's not quite there yet because he is very unselfish. He only scores 13 points a game. And now people are going to say, well, it's a team that they can beat you with so many weapons. But sometimes when a team, and there's going to be games where there's going to be runs by the other team, who's the guy they're going to put the ball in his hands and say, hey, I need you to get me a couple buckets to, to stem this run or, yeah. or get us on track on the offensive end or just even take over a game at times. If you look yeah. down the roster, I feel like it's going to be Perkins or Nigel Williams-Goss is capable of making big shots, and he's a guy that lives for those type of moments. Going to have the ball in their hands quite a bit. Karnowski snares another board. He's got five. Williams Goss weaving his way inside, goaltending the call on dime. And I think that's exactly the type of possessions that Mark Hugh is going to look for here in the last 10 minutes of the game. The ball goes side to side, just running their ball screen offense. Nigel Williams Goss turns the corner. And that looked like a pretty good block by Malik yep, Dime. It sure did. That ball was still on its way up. Them open and it'll knock down the deuce. Karnowski gets a touch, gets the side of the floor all to himself. He'll give it up, and Melson with the three. Karnowski so unselfish. He had the little turnaround in the middle, but at the last second corner of his eye, he sees Melson. And it's more important for Silas Melson yep. to make a shot than Karnowski because Melson's been struggling from behind the arc. Only 20% coming into tonight. But Karnowski could have shot this ball. Look, he's seven or eight feet away from the hoop. But that's a great pass right on target and on time to the shooter, Melson. They've assisted on 19 of their 29 buckets. And the foul on the drive. Johnson will get to the line. Here's one of the few transition opportunities that the Huskies has had tonight. Carlos Johnson gets out, goes to try to take it up strong to the rim, but Perkins wasn't having any, any of that. Now you got a little John going on with Perkins and Crisp and Johnson. It's a rivalry that had been dormant for 10 years. They played last year down in the Bahamas as part of the Atlantis tournament. This the first that has been rescheduled from the get-go. Nelson looking to go back to back. Fultz. Nice find by Chris. That really was a nice pass. Chris had two guys around him, delivered a perfect bounce pass to Markel Fultz right in rhythm. And you know, to me, it's amazing the, the numbers that Fultz is putting up. 23 points per game, 54% from the field, nearly 50% from behind the arc. And you know he's facing every team's best defender. Look at that Malik Dime with the block. And for a freshman to put up those type of numbers with the attention that he's receiving on the defensive end is, is truly tremendous. Williams Goss to Williams. And Crisp is fouled on the drive by Karnowski. Well, Markel Fultz, he's one of the best players in the country. He struggled a little bit tonight, trying to find a little rhythm lately. Crisp with the nice dime and Markel Fultz with the finish. Getting set for the college football playoff semifinals. December 31st, Washington and Alabama in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. And then out to the Fiesta Bowl 
for Clemson and Ohio State. 7.28 to play here tonight in Spokane. It's been all Gonzaga. They're shooting nearly 60% and have assisted on 20 of their 30 buckets. They're impressive. My first time seeing them live. I've watched a lot of their games. The Advocare Invitational was at their game this past weekend at the Staples Center. And to see this team with the depth that they have, the perimeter shooting, Karnowski asserting himself as a force and continuing to get healthy and being a presence down low is a big difference for Mark Few. And I think the, the biggest thing is out, they've been dialed into the scouting report defensively. They have taken away all the strengths of the Washington. They've kept them out of transition, maybe besides the offensive rebounding that the Huskies have been dominant in that sense. But this is a very complete Gonzaga team. Well, the second chance points, really the only thing that Washington has been able to cash in on tonight. Folks, crazy <laughs> shot and got it to go with contact. How about the body control right there by Folks? He's got 17. And then able to put enough English on that ball to spin it in. Williams Goss back to the line. Well, look at the shot by Markel Foltz as he, he drives the lane and then he feels Goss try to cut him off. The beautiful spin takes a little bit of contact there from Zach Collins and able to knock it in. Highest scoring freshman in the country at 22 points per game. And I like what this young man at the line has done tonight. One of the very first points in the broadcast that I tried to make, it could go one of two ways for Nigel Williams Goss tonight. He could really try to press and do too many things because he's playing against his former team and his former coach. But besides maybe the first shot of the game, and look at this. Oh! oh the rejection! <laughs> and that was a complete anticipation call by the official. We're going to call a foul on Collins. On the block of Fultz. I got to see this. Now, Zach Collins, he's an athlete. That, that's just all ball. An incredible block by Zach Collins. The great timing. Marco Fultz was going to throw that down. But the official completely whiffed on wow. that call. You can't anticipate that there's going to be contact. A lot of leather. Not a lot. It was all leather. <laughs> it wasn't just a lot. It was the whole thing. Hand to leather right there. No contact anywhere. But he was ready to blow that whistle yeah. before the action even happened. Great block by Zach Collins. And I told you, he was the guy that pro scouts are definitely here to see. Maybe the second best pro prospect on the floor. That was Collins' fourth personal foul, but was it a foul? It certainly didn't look like it. Now, to me, that's a hashtag SC top 10. Yes. Markel yes. Foltz is an elite athlete. He was going to throw that down. And Zach Collins, whoo, that was impressive. And Collins has just fouled out. <laughs> Offensive foul, Johnson lowered the shoulder. Into Matthews. And Carlos Johnson does drive into the basket. Matthews does a great job of moving his feet, showing his hands, and taking the contact to his chest. That's another good sign. You know that guys are buying in when they are jacked up about defensive plays and taking charges. And well, and the fact that they're still guarding and they're up 37 points yep. with six minutes left that you're still making that effort. I think that's even a better sign. Folks using the screen and knocking down the J for three. 22, he's right at his average now on the night. But he's had to work for everything. It hasn't been an easy night by any means. Mm -hmm for Markel Fultz, and that's a credit to the multiple defenders that the Zags have thrown at him. They've contested almost all his shots. Now, he, the ones he's made have been extremely tough for the most part. Now, he hasn't got a lot of help from the rest of his teammates. 16 points in the second half for Fultz. 22 shots taken to get those 22 points, and Karnowski, who is not a very good free throw shooter statistically, has a couple tonight. 
Now three for four. Schimmick with over 1,000 points and 600 rebounds, the ninth Bulldog in history to do that. Another rebound for Schimmick. Playing a little point guard. Oh, he's a high <laughs> dribbler, too, as a point guard. Almost <laughs> lost the handle. <laughs> well, Beth, I wanted to pick up on the point of Nigel Williams-Goss and the way he's played tonight. And he's he's been so under control, he hasn't made it a personal battle. He really let the game come to him yeah. for the most part, got his teammates involved, hasn't hunted his shot, just really played how a consummate point guard should play and a leader of this team should play. A lot of credit to Williams Goss and, and the game that he has that he's had tonight here in the kennel. He's had a lot of questions obviously this week getting ready to play Washington and some of the discussions he had a couple years ago when he left said I was concerned first and foremost with winning. I wanted to go to the NCAA tournament. I wanted to develop my game further. And I wanted to be a part of something special and I thought this was the place to do it. I know a lot of Husky fans and even Lorenzo Romar admitted, we thought if anything, he might be going pro. We, we were all kind of surprised that he was staying in college and going somewhere else and oh, by the way, going right down the street. Well, give him credit for knowing that he wasn't ready to go pro yeah. and that he, had some things that he still need to work on and improve at. And I believe he's doing those things. He's shooting the ball well from behind the arc, 46% going into tonight's game. He's leading this team better, and these guys are following him. Tilly off the bounce. Could get interesting later in the season. You, you mentioned your, your freshmen were watching a guy like Fultz tonight. There are some terrific rookie point guards around the country. Can one of those guys lead their team to a title, or do you have a better chance late in the year with a veteran like Nigel well, spinning in the lane? It's definitely possible you have a couple guys that are in that conversation on getting to the Final Four right now. One is Lonzo Ball yep. with what UCLA is doing and the pieces that he has around him. The other one's De'Aaron Fox. De Fox. Those two guys can definitely get their teams to the Final Four and obviously are le legitimate national title contenders. We might see Rui Hachimura coming on here in a second. I want to remind you, after the Warriors-Clippers game tonight over on ESPN at Sports Center at night with Stan and Neal. They'll have all the latest from the NBA and college hoops. Sports Center at night after the NBA doubleheader on ESPN. And uh, loud applause for Rui coming on. Rui Hachimura, one of f only five Japanese-born Division I players that there's ever been. Young man still struggling a little bit with the language barrier. They have a manager on the team named Ken Nakagawa who speaks fluent Japanese that is helping Rui through the process. Look a little at him bit. smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to have somebody helping him out for sure. It's really been a steep learning curve for Rui. And watch Here this he if goes. he gets a chance. Oh. He's one of the best athletes on this team. He would have brought the house down with a dunk there. Karnowski's night may be over, by the way. He heads to the bench. 17 points tonight, 12 of those coming in the second half. And the foul will be on Hachimura. Uh, Tilly and Larson as the three international newcomers. Well, this has been a great program for international players yeah. to come in and, and have a lot of success. Tommy Lloyd, 
one of the assistant coaches on, on the bench there for, for the Zags has kind of led that charge with Kevin Pangos, Karnowski, Sacre, Turial, Elias Harris. So, so much success on the international game. And, and we know basketball is truly becoming such an international and yeah. worldly game that you have to go and scour everywhere around the planet to find great players. You see Tommy Lloyd right there with going with the no tie look, kind of matching yeah. Fuey tonight. Well, if you look at uh, just the last couple of years, even uh, Wiltshire transferring in here, although he had a lot more perimeter to his game. But look at the Sabonis, I think they thought was going to be here for three or four years. <laughs> and got so good so fast, he was done in two. Yeah, and he's just now, he's starting in the NBA, yeah. a power forward for the <laughs> Oklahoma City Thunder. Not a bad pickup. But I think he has some great bloodlines to go along with yeah. that. Yeah, that's true. Doing it on both ends right now for Gonzaga and a foul. Achimura picking up his second. And I need to remember, though, for Williams Goss, who had the layup at the other end. And a big night for the Zags. Back here in Spokane. A uh, beautiful, if not uh, crisp, evening here in the Pacific Northwest. Eighth ranked and undefeated Gonzaga looking like they will stay that way. 87 to 61 over Washington. How about Miles? Uh, you got your top West Coast teams for us. Well, UCLA, they've proven themselves. They won the Wooden Legacy, beat Texas A&M, went on the road, won at Kentucky, one of the hardest places to win the country. Zags, we see tonight how special that they can yeah. be. St. Mary's still flying under the radar as Randy Bennett <laughs> normally does, but has an excellent team. Jock Landale, Calvin Hermanson, Nar, Rayhan, USC, watch out for them. When they need to get healthy. Benny Boatwright, their starting power forward, is out with a yeah. little knee injury right now, but Chemezi Metu is an excellent is an excellent player. Elijah Stewart, one of the better wings on the West Coast. And then Oregon. I feel like they're still trying to find themselves right now. I've obviously suffered a couple of losses. Yeah. But they'll be there at the end with UCLA and probably Arizona at the top of the league in the Pac-12. You can see uh, UCLA and uh, Oregon and Arizona Cal, a couple of early season matchups right after Christmas. Those two will be playing early in the Pac-12 campaign. And USC at 8 0 off to their best start in uh, 16 years under Andy Enfield. They went on the road and beat Texas AM. Mm -hmm. Not an easy place to win. Beat a solid SMU team. And then beat a West Coast Conference team this past Saturday in BYU. In a game that was kind of, your neck is going to break on that one. They were just going back and forth, running up and down the floor. Colorado got a huge win tonight. They beat Xavier. They'll be playing BYU on Saturday night on ESPN2. Yeah, one of the big factors for them is that they got their wing back, Xavier Johnson. Yeah. He's been excellent so far for Tad Boyle's team through the first month of the season. Watch this. <laughs> there goes Rui with the jam. <laughs> I told you, he's athletic. <laughs> Rui Hachimura. Remember that name on the West. Dime with the bucket. Rui's, uh, we're told Rui's dad is from Africa. Rui's mom is from Japan. Played high school ball in Japan. Well, Rui Hachimura. I love saying the name. Gets the bounce pass from Alberts, one dribble, takes it up strong with the big time rush. A little bit of a chin up there. It's be a timeout called by Washington and a 92-65 lead for the Zags. Two minutes to go, Gonzaga with the lead over Washington, 92-65. Silas Melson at the free throw line. And it was a 30-6 run in the first half that busted this thing open for the Zags. 
Nigel Williams-Goss, a season-high 23 points to lead the way in another well-balanced attack. A slow start for Washington. They were really hampered by that. Got down big early as the Zags shot 64% in the first half and were up 25 at the intermission. And the uh, sing a song here of happy <laughs> birthday to Rem Backamus, the Rem VP as they like to call him. I Out saw, I saw his main man Kyle Wiltshire on Instagram <laughs> give him a couple shout outs today. Oh, nice. Zags have emptied the bench. Deep ball from Green. And the rebound for Rem. <laughs> it's funny when, you know, when Bacchus gets the ball, it, it doesn't matter where he catches it, the fans behind us, shoot it, shoot, shoot it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for yours. Just going to get the quick timeout to get some more substitutes on. Washington led by Markel Fultz with 25. Final 45 seconds of this one. What uh, impressed you the most tonight about the Zags? Well, I think the thing that impressed me the most is the depth of this team, the versatility that they have on the offensive end with so many weapons. You bring in the big guys, they have the energy on the defensive end, they have a great presence. They were dialed in on that end of the floor to make everything tough for Markel Foltz. Four guys in double figures. They were scoring in the paint. They were scoring from outside the arc. Foul here with 16 seconds to go. Winter coming up next, it's baseball tonight with all the latest from the winter meetings in Washington, D.C. Did our Yankees, they get a roll to oh, Chapman back? Oh, got the arm back in the bullpen, they did. I love hearing that. Watch out for the Yankees in the coming years. Gonzaga's going to improve to 9-0, and oh, and they're going to beat Washington to get there. The Huskies will fall to 4-4. Four and 98-71 four. the final. The former Husky, Nigel Williams-Goss, going for a season-high 23 points. Handshakes for Mark Few and Lorenzo Romar as the Zags get the win as they start to renew the rivalry between these two teams from Washington State. Coming up next, it's baseball tonight.